Gratitude is such a superpower. Gratitude will literally bring you into the subtle realm, deeper connection to your intuition. That is one of its many, many, many spiritual powers. I am Reverend Amani Malaika, and I am so grateful that you are here. This is the second in our series on abundant gratitude. So if you missed the first video, I invite you to go back on harvesting gratitude. Because what we're going to dive into today, as a result of harvesting gratitude, one of the gifts that it offers is it helps you get into deeper relationship with your holy nature, your true nature. And that nature has the capacity to feel and sense the mystery, something greater than the seen reality. Yeah, gratitude can do that. So if you were with me last video, you and I practice a little bit of remembering and feeling into what it feels like to feel gratitude, to be grateful. And that feeling is so powerful that it allows you to be fully present in your body. Feeling what it feels like to be grateful is a practice to feel deeply. It is a practice that allows you to expand into your extrasensory capacities as a divine being. That's how powerful gratitude is. And what I know about the truth of your nature, the truth of our nature as, as humans, as we have been anointed with a feeling and sensing ability. And the practice of gratitude helps us get closer to that, helps us get practiced at feeling those extrasensory capacities within us. Sometimes it's called intuition, right? Sometimes it gets really wild and it's psychic and it's, um, you know, all of the extrasensory, extra perception abilities that, that often get, get presented as some people have those kinds of gifts. But what I know is all people have those gifts. And that when you and I welcome and embrace our wholeness, we welcome and embrace that extrasensory, that perception gift, that, that feeling gift. And when I am in a space of gratitude, I move myself into a space of opening my ability to feel deeply and my ability to feel more subtly. And why is that important? Why should you care about that? So that you can be psychic? That maybe, I don't know. But what I know for sure is that capacity to subtly feel is what allows us to click into a, 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 a place that knows, that knows good, that knows loving action. You know, one of my all-time favorite Ernest Holmes quotes, and Ernest Holmes is the founder of Science of Mind, which is a metaphysical teaching, is love points the way, law makes the way happen. And in order to feel, sense, love's guidance, you and I have to be able to feel it. We have to be able to sense where love is pointing us. You need to be able to hear, see, feel, discern love's pointing. Because love always points you and I towards greater good. Always, always, always. There is no other possibility. And so that love pointing, you know, Michael Beckwith, the founder of the Agape Spiritual Center, calls it catching the spark of the divine. And that when you and I catch the spark of the divine, we catch the grand idea, we catch the, the direction 
that spirit is pointing us in. And I want you to be able to have that in your toolbox. If you are looking for greater good in your life, if you are looking for a deeper sense of aliveness and flow and abundance, and if you are looking to be a place in life that brings more good into the collective, into your community, this is a way that you do that. You and I have to develop a mastery, a skillfulness in discerning and sensing the divine's pointing, love's pointing, so that you can then act on it. And this capacity and this skill is not so woo-woo and so out there that only certain special people have it. You have it. That skill is built into you. Just like we talked in the last series about you are naturally designed for abundance. You are naturally designed to make use of your intuition. You are naturally designed to see and feel and hear and sense and know the mystery. Yes. And that skill is useful in creating the life that you want to be living and creating the world we want for all of life. And I think it's really important because in the context of creating greater good, of co-creating our lives, there's so much external programming, noise, um, crappiness that you and I rely on often have been trained to rely on as this is what is going to teach you how to have greater good. If you follow these seven steps, if you go after hoarding and getting the new shiny thing of consuming, you know, there's all of this external um, directions, right, that you and I are constantly being fed that are inundating our consciousness all the time that mostly I believe where we get stuck, where you get stuck, where I get stuck, where the collective who has gotten stuck is relying on these external knowledges, these external rules and regulations and systems and structures to give us our good. That if we follow those rules, if we follow the steps of capitalism, then we're going to have enough money, we're going to have enough love, we're going to have enough health, we're going to be okay, we're going to experience well-being. And it is simply untrue. What I actually know to be true in my own life and in the lives of those that I have the honor to walk with on a spiritual journey it is turning away from those external circumstances and conditions and pressures and bullshitty guidances and turning into these incredible tools and technologies within our capacity to intuit, our capacity to feel the subtle sometimes guidance of love itself, of the divine itself, into right action. And often, 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 the guidance that you are receiving within, the guidance that is pointing you to greater good, the love that is trying to express through you and through your life is in stark contradiction to the bullshitty external norms and circumstances outside of you which is why it takes practice, which is why it takes daily commitment, which is why I'm having us all participate in the gratitude challenge during the series so that you and I can get into the habit of sourcing from source itself, from the greatest power in the universe and beyond our greater good. When you and I go directly to the source for the next right step, for loving action, for making decisions from a place that is inspired 
by love, by the divine, rather than making decisions and choices and taking actions that are completely misguided because they've come from an external force, which does not care about you and is not serving you. It doesn't serve or care about anybody. It doesn't matter what your skin color, what your sexuality, what your gender, that external system is not for you. But there is something that is, and that is source, that is the divine, that is the holy, that is love. And through the simple daily commitment to practicing gratitude, you have a way to get into more intimate relationship with feeling into that intuition, feeling into love's pointing. So take a minute again, like I asked you in the last video. Feel what it feels like to be full of gratitude. Thank you. I am so grateful for the breath in my body. I am so grateful for the divine appointing me to life in this moment, in this time in history. What a gift it is to be fully alive and present. And it is that feeling that begins to open me to feel and sense greater and greater and greater, beyond what I can see, beyond just this material plane, into a greater reality. Yes, it may be subtle. It may be the subtle realm, as some like to call it, it's the spiritual realm. But it is not beyond you. It is right here. And you can feel it and allow your gratitude practice to carry you into that subtle realm, to carry you into your intuition that knows how to co-create greater good, that has an answer to whatever it is you are struggling with. This is powerful, powerful practice. And I want you to know there is nothing that you've done or that you think or that you've misbelieved or misunderstood that can take that away from you. And gratitude is so powerful, it can literally quantum leap you into that subtle realm, into the greater good, into the mystery that maybe you and I don't understand and maybe science doesn't quite get it yet even though it's getting closer and closer, but that you can use to co-create your life with spirit, with the divine wisdom that is in you, in your body that is, is feelable, but you have to be willing to feel. You have to be willing to be present to what is happening in you. And sometimes that doesn't feel good. Sometimes it feels really crappy. Sometimes you go and turn within and there's a whole bunch of grief and sadness there waiting for you. But you've got the power to feel through that. Feel it to the bottom, as I like to say. But as you get more practice at feeling sensing in your own body those more subtle, greater, sometimes mysterious experiences become available to you. Way more powerful, way more wise than the external set of rules and practices and bull crappy things that are trying to tell you what to do with your life, who you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to look like the kind of money you're supposed to go after, the kind of job you're supposed to have, what's important. None of those answers live outside of you. But what I know is if you want extra sensory perception, you first got to have some simple basic perception, which means learning to feel, taking the time every day to practice getting into your body and, and being present to what is there, emotionally, physically, all of it. 
This is spiritual wisdom. This is spiritual practice. And this is what brings you closer to being able to more beautifully and harmoniously and wholly create your life. To bring your full aliveness to this planet, to be the blessing you've been put on this planet to be. That is how amazing you are. The divine put you here on the planet and this time on purpose with your giftedness and you get to use it for greater good. I love you so much.